So how about these results that we got from MindMed at the end of the year and Cybin? These results were just, uh, I think many viewers have already seen them already. I'm just going to do a quick breakdown. I mean, just game-changing. Um, I've always had high expectations for these drugs to perform well in clinical trials, but I, uh, I'm i going to be honest, both of these trials, the results exceeded my expectations. Just remarkable results. Um, let's just quickly look at MindMed here. All right. So they were looking at generalized anxiety disorder with LSD, MM120. Um, also, interestingly enough, at the end of their presentation, they they gave some updates on their IP strategy. Very interesting to look at as well. But um, okay, you had 39 people in the 25 microgram group, 36 and 50, 40 in the 100 microgram group, 40 in the 200 microgram group, and 39 in the placebo. And again, I'm just going to quickly go over the results. There's a, there's a lot to it, but I'm going to cover the main parts. So in both the 100 and 200 microgram group of, um, of MM120, 78% of people were responders to the treatment, meaning they saw a 50% or more um, improvement in their anxiety symptoms uh, on the ham a uh this was again four weeks after a single dose and mind ben makes it very clear that in this trial there was no preparation pre-treatment activities consisted of only standard informed consent process so basically telling them like maybe what to expect uh telling them the risks uh stuff like that um, there was no assisted therapy, um, no psychotherapy, and no therapeutic intervention beyond the study drug. There was no integration, um, no ongoing therapeutic engagement as part of the clinical trial activities. And considering all of this, it makes the results even more impressive. Um, so again, the 78% response at, at the four-week mark after one dose remarkable. Um, interestingly, uh, I thought this was very interesting to see the remission rate was very, was superior in the 100 microgram group compared to, to all other, other doses. 50% um, remission uh, for generalized anxiety disorder is remarkable. Even 35% th uh, is remarkable. But interesting to see the 100 microgram dose um, Sorry, show the best results here. Uh, again, I mean, there's, there's really, there's there's other stuff to look at here. They went very deep into the results, but it's just, they're just remarkable. Um, I'm curious to see durability out to 12 weeks. Um, curious to see if in the phase three trial, they look at a second dose for, for people who relapse at a certain point, kind of what Compass is doing in their phase three. Um, but again, these results were spectacular. And um if I'm an if I'm a mind med investor here, uh, I'm very happy with these results. Uh, they again, I said it a million times, remarkable. Uh, now let's move on to Cybin again. Remarkable results at the 12 milligram dose and uh, 16 milligram dose. Um, you had um, nine people in cohort four, nine people in cohort five, nine people in cohort six. Uh, by the way, Cybin was looking at uh, major depressive disorder, uh, sort of, not sort of, uh, as an adjunct treatment to SSRIs. I think this is a fantastic idea for Cybin to go as second-line treatment, letting people remain on their antidepressants. Uh, I know we all in the psychedelic medicine movement want to see the day where the first treatment option is psychedelics, but... In the real world, it may not end up like that for a long time. I like how Cybin let people remain on their antidepressants because coming off of them for a lot of people is extremely difficult. Um, I do not think it's ideal to be going into a psychedelic experience if you're withdrawing from SSRIs uh, or SNRIs. That's my opinion. Um, 
I think quite quite honestly, it's just common sense. Um, I think a lot of people would agree with me in this field. Um, and keep in mind, uh, the, the current standard of care for treatment-resistant depression, esketamine, it's only approved for use with antidepressants. So that's something to think about. Now, again, uh, I would like to see the day where this is frontline treatment, first-line treatment. Um, but well done on Cybin for this trial. Uh, the results were just ridiculously good. Uh, 14.8 difference in matters between placebo and the, the 12 milligram group. They saw a similar response with the 16 milligram group. Um, this is, I mean, it's game changing. It really is. Here it is, 16 milligram versus placebo, 12.9 uh, nine difference on the madras. Um you know, in previous videos, I discussed that what we see with antidepressants from a, met a meta-analysis of all these studies is a two-point difference. So this is, seems clear to me that it's showing potential to be far superior to the current standard of care for, I guess, second-line treatment, which would be just going to another SSRI, SNRI. Um, now, the cool thing about this trial um, is that they looked at two doses, what has been historically used in academic studies, like at Johns Hopkins, uh, I believe NYU as well. Uh, you see here uh, in the light blue is the results after the 12 milligram group and 16 milligram group uh, got one dose of the drug. Uh, that This was taken, I believe, at week three, yes, day 21. And then at week three, they took a second dose and you can see the improvement here. Uh, a 5.8 reduction improvement uh, in the 12 milligram group and a doing a little mental math here uh, and a 2.7 reduction improvement with the second dose in the 16 milligram group. Now, this is where I am saying to myself, holy crap, this is... You know, a lot of people in the community are worried that things are getting overhyped and I actually share the same concern. I think if people have expectations that are unrealistic coming into these trials and then in the real world, uh, there's the potential for people to get let down and feel really horrible if the treatment doesn't work for them. They may think like, wow, like I've tried everything. Nothing's worked. The one thing that was supposed to work for me didn't work. I have no hope. Um, so as you can see, I think high expectations, um, there is some downside there, but <laughs> I mean, when you see these results, um, it's just um, just really game changing. Um, Seventy-five, seventy-nine percent of people in remission after two doses in the twelve milligram group. Uh, we're going to focus on that. Um, that's. 70 again 79 percent of people no longer meeting the diagnostic criteria for having major depressive disorder it's it's amazing i am it's just so exciting to follow what these companies are doing uh looking forward to also durability with this trial at the 12 week mark i want to see what um how many people are still in remission um and now for for this part of the video i'm going to talk about the reactions to to the stock prices of these companies. Uh, uh, Cybin's actually been down since these results were released. MindMed is up a little bit, I think, um, 10%, which is a lot for a normal like stock if you're holding. But in biotech, when you get results this good, you expect the stock to to be up like 50% off of these results. Maybe, I mean, with these results, like you could argue the company's values, both of them should have like freaking tripled. I mean, um, but here's the problem with the psychedelic medicine sector and investing in it is that uh, the news seems to be priced in time and time again. Uh, I have not seen one trial where the results are great um, and the stock soars. And if it does, if it, if it does happen, it crashes right back down. Um, you know, someone on shroom stocks, actually, I said this and the person wrote back, welcome to the stock market where everything is priced in. 
Um, I think that person was mistaken in uh, with with biotech in general. That's that's not really the case. You you do see swings usually. You see incredible swings uh, in the stock price when results are released. Uh, it's probably, I mean, as as I'm sure many of you know, only 10% of drugs uh, will make it to market. So there are a lot of surprises with these other drugs that are less researched. Now we have all the research of, not all of it, we have a lot of research already from the 60s, 70s, at, uh, sorry, 60s. 50s um and anecdotal data uh from people anecdotal reports so people know the results are going to be great um and it's upsetting to see the stock prices not react uh you had companies like compass and atai who were up more after these results than the actual companies that released these great results um so it's it's interesting to look at um but again, if you're in this space for the long term, these results should make you very happy, in my opinion, with your decision right now uh, to be invested in these companies. I'm not personally invested in these two companies, um, but um, the data is phenomenal. And, you know, I'm just going to just going to wrap it up here. I just want to quickly go over these uh, the, the trial data from from both of these um clinical trials um i look forward to both of these companies eventually entering into phase three um and i'm very hopeful for the future of psychedelic medicine and this just boosts my confidence even more if you liked this video if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and also follow us at psyched insights on x thank you very much and have a great day everyone